give. The healing will cause people to see straight and understand more clearly God's divine purpose of love. It is just so many things that when a person's alive, uh, receive and embrace the healing power and love of our Savior. What I feel God is saying, let's open ourselves to the revelation, to the vision. scripture here we're going to read and this is Proverbs 29 verse 18 so if you're there let's read it together are you ready are you ready yes. all right let's go where there is no vision the people perish but he that keepeth the law happy is he amen father I just want to thank you for the word of God I ask that it will be a blessing to all of us today Lord we thank you for the Precious Holy Spirit, oh God, that just ministered and deliberated many hearts. And we ask, Lord God, that you will uh, just anoint the word so that the ears of the hearers will hear and those by way of television, Lord, may receive from you today. We thank you. Ask that you continue to take full control by your spirit and by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. The scripture says in Proverbs 29, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, what I am not implying is that there's no vision for the church. That's not what I'm implying, but I want you to sort of hear what I believe the Lord was given. And the word visions here, vision here, is taken uh, from the word cause on cause on and that word means a sight or dream or revelation or oracle where there is most interpreters have uh, said that it took it to mean revelation where there is no revelation the people perish or, and the word perish is taken from a word which means para. It means to loosen. It implies to expose, dismiss. Figuratively, it means to avoid, go back, naked, uncovered. So it implies where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. They get loose. And uh, the nakedness has to do with sin. But, so, the writer of Proverbs says, where there is no revelation, where there is no oracle, where there is no prophecy, where there is no word from the Lord, 
the people will cast off restraint and not be committed. And so, um, but he said also, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So the, the word um, vision or oracle, revelation. So I was just praying and the Lord was speaking to my heart about <clears throat> uh, people coming into agreement with the vision that he's given. Uh, the revelation and so that he can do for them what he wants to do and today was a good indication how God was speaking to our hearts through the prophecy and saying just yield and, and, and open up and praise and this kind of thing um, so we you know a word from the Lord a word of prophecy un folding or unveiling that which God's mind is it's that uh, basically what he's implying here and where there is no uh, there is no word from the Lord where there's no word that is communicating the mind and will and purpose of God the people they don't have that vision so they may cast off restraint and what I, in a nutshell, I believe he was saying to me, it's important for people to come into submission and agreement and embrace the vision that he unfolds. Because it could mean a lot for our future. And so now I'll, I'll go back and read some other, share some other things, but that's in essence what I believe he was, he was sharing. And, of course, that is for any vision or revelation that God gives to his people or his leaders. And in, in the days of Israel, God would speak to Israel. And he would unfold his mind for Israel. And he would give instructions for Israel to abide by. But the, the importance of the instruction was to bring them into divine prosperity and prosperity alike. And, but as Israel many times they uh, did not embrace it as they should so, uh, so uh, their future Israel went into captivity and also Judah went into captivity with Babylon so uh, so I'm, I'm seeing what I believe he was putting on in my heart is that where there's no revelation uh, people tend to get loose and lax and diverted in their operation with the Lord. And sometimes in their walk with God, a person can be uh, kind of doing like their own thing. And because it feels like well, kind of right. But God has always been interested in leading a people his way in how he wants to heal and deliver and set them free and bring them into the fullness of what he has for their lives individually and collectively. So where there is no revelation, where there is no vision, the people perish or cast off restraint, tend to get loose and um, tend to go back. So healing and restoration is for this uh, branch of Zion uh, so I'll talk a little briefly about the vision of healing and restoration. Now, healing and restoration is only a tool to help people move out of that state of being cursed, or I don't want to say being cursed, but curses being upon their lives and curses holding them back and so that uh, they can be freed up. And it is God's mind and God's will to free up people from the bondages of sin, emotional bondages, and the other bondages, and so on. And um, so this is a part of what he was doing today, just simply moving and by his spirit and giving us that wonderful touch of his divine glory. Um, concerning the vision of healing, 
God was making clear to us that there may be a need for healing of memories. And sometimes our memories need healing because of the many things that we have passed through, rejections, abandonment, traumas, hurts, humiliations, fears, hates, um, and damaged emotions, abuse. These things, when God uh, looks at a community or society, he looks at the problems that exist and he looks also at what he has in mind to bring a people from one state to another. So he has a perfect plan, he has a perfect pattern to do it. And so uh, for us, we have uh, the healing and restoration. It is, uh, as I said, a tool uh, used by God. It's one of other tools. It's not by any means uh, the only tool. I wouldn't be that foolish, but I'm saying it is a tool to help people or to break off the things that happen to people through sin and Satan and sickness. And it is God's will and purpose to do so. So when, when I understand that what uh, the tool that God is using to set me free and set you free, we can embrace it. We don't have to look at what others are do doing in the other churches and say, well, they're not doing it this way. Because my future may not uh, depend on how he's doing it somewhere else, right? But my future, when God brings a people together, when God gathers a community of people and believers together, and he sees a particular need, if it's, if, if it's a need for wholeness or healing and uh, bruises and uh, abuse and abandonment, then he will bring those people together, as many as hear that vision, they will gravitate toward it because of the God's spirit drawing them and their destiny can be, um, it, can, it can affect their destiny positively, uh, but it can be also negative if, if uh, a person understands or believes that God is bringing and drawing them and then they not embrace the revelation. Somebody say, embrace the revelation. See, God always has purpose in mind, and everything that he does is full of purpose. So God brings us here, or he, the audience that you may hear, or the, that may be listening by way of television, if they gravitate toward it, that means that somewhere there's a need in their lives of the hand of God and the grace of God to bring healing and wholeness to their lives. And as they embrace the revelation, somebody say, embrace the revelation, then God gets a go-ahead in doing what he wants to do. And I've discovered that when a person gets healed, they see clearer. And when a person gets healed, then uh, concepts begin to change, right? When a person get, gets healed, their perceptions change. So things happen differently. Uh, their realities change as they are being healed because uh, the, the lack of healing uh, distorts and colors things. It causes a person to see things in a distorted manner. So the more a person is healed, the clearer their vision becomes, the clearer they can be able to see reality. And their reality slowly changes from hopelessness and despair uh, to one of expectation in the Lord. God is designing uh, healing for a person. So it's important for uh, we that are hearers to embrace what uh, God wants to do in our lives. And restoration has to deal, do with restoring people back uh, to the place and position of what God had in mind in the beginning of how he and why he made us. God made us for a purpose. And he gave us Identity. We are God's children, so we're made in the image and likeness of God. Since we're made in the image and likeness of God, then God is important. God is. It is very important that we allow Him to make us and mold us more like Him. For God calls out a group of people here, and He begins to work in those people's lives, 
and begin to bring the people to a wholeness by his spirit and uh, so that we can, uh, as our brother said earlier, we can love one another better, right? And so we can also begin to fulfill the divine purposes of God. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, where there is no revelation, the revelation is God says, I come to heal, I come to deliver the oppressed, the bruised, the battered, the abused, the rejected, the abandoned. I have come to heal. So for us, this is the power and the anointing God has rest upon the ministry. So no matter what he does, it's done. Uh, there is some form of healing, some form of deliverance, some form of healing memories and emotions and setting the captives free because that's what God is designed to do. That's what he wants to do. So as we cooperate with God, as we embrace the revelation, that this, is, this is the point I'm making, as we embrace the revelation, then God is able to do what he wants to do, right? There are times when people leave and they uh, may not agree with the, uh, what God is doing because they don't understand. God looked at their lives and he said, if I can heal them, it's going to uh, help them avoid a whole lot of things that would happen in their lives in the future. And, um, but we've got to know that. Look at somebody say, but we've got to know this. God knows best. The Father knows best, right? He knows what we need. He knows the sense of purpose and identity that it will bring about as we allow him to heal us. And the importance of embrace, embracing this revelation. If we embrace this revelation, uh, then... Uh, we can move from bad relationships to more wholesome relationships. If we embrace what he's saying, then uh, better relationships with parents, better relationships with siblings, better relationships with children, uh, natural and spiritual blessings, and also the divine will and purpose of God can be established in our individual and collective lives. If, as we embrace the vision of, or the, the, the revelation of what he said, I want to heal you. I want to make you whole. I want to, I want to set you free. I want to, to, to change your destiny, Satan's purpose to destroy you. Maybe a person has not given up bitterness. They got bitter through life's trials and situation. And the Lord says, well, you cannot continue in that vein. You must let me heal you so that my purpose will not be uh, thwarted in your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. So um, if we do not embrace the revelation then separation and divorce can take place. It's possible. Iniquity can abound in the heart. Um, untimely deaths can take place. Unfulfilled lives. People can become stagnated. Divine purposes can be aborted or delayed. We can walk in carnality. Uh, lack of Christian growth and character will not be developed as it should. So the list can go on if we do not embrace the revelation of what God is saying to our individual lives. Can somebody say, thank you, Jesus? So it behooves us to do so, and um, it, is the, it is the goodness of God to help us. And he was helping us just this morning, and God helps us time and time again as we come into the fellowship the sanctuary to worship and to praise the Lord. God constantly helps us. Uh, uh, maybe we've had a hard week. Maybe somebody just has just been so taxing. But when we come together, God's Holy Spirit comes and just lifts the burdens and sets us free. And understand how much we love. He loves us. And uh, so, uh, <clears throat> but with that freedom always comes responsibility to avoid uh, by his grace, uh, just allowing ourselves to be captured again uh, by the same things that the enemy does constantly. 
And um, so also demon oppression can take place and a life can be lived more or less pleasing Satan rather than God if visions that God embrace for every place that he wants to embrace his visions. The visions may vary, but they all will somehow point to healing or setting people free in some way, form, or fashion. And um, so that's the important thing now as we're rehearsing again. Uh, we'll leave this place. We'll, we'll meet again in days and days and weeks ahead. And our lives can be challenged from day to day and from week to week. And how we live our lives and how we, what we allow God to do in our lives will be very, very important. Somebody say amen. amen. Right. Because of the presence of God here, you, can't be, you will be affected by God's presence and it's for a purpose. And um, <clears throat> so um, we embrace it as God's will for our lives. God's will for me is not only to teach or preach healing, but to be first partaker of the healing and restoration. And God has begun some wonderful things in that in, in, uh, in my life. And it's life changing. It's, it's literally life changing to be healed by God, you know. And so if you're here today and you may have heard the vision, you've maybe seen others testify, and you really don't quite grasp, well, say, I don't know whether I need any of that or not. Then rest assured, if you are part of it, if you've gravitated toward the ministry, then there is something that God wants to do in your life. Just as sure as we live in. So I, I really, uh, I guess my appeal to each one of us is this is, let's open ourselves for God's healing love. God, uh, there are various ways, and I'll talk about that in a little while, but open ourselves for God's healing love. We all have a need to be whole in God. When you get saved, you're not whole, right? You're saved, but you're not whole. You're only saved. And uh, so God begins a process of re-educating us, renewing our mind, our thinking, changing our, uh, our concepts and perceptions, and all of these things here. And he says, if you continue in my word, then you're my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So freedom will come as we continue in the Lord. So we're on a journey. We're on a journey with God. Praise God. And so uh, as we open to God's varied operations, God may heal you and I in our prayer time. All right, that's just one way, right? God may heal you and I when we confess our faults with one another with a trusted friend, somebody or some leader, and pray for one another. Am I right? That's what the Bible says. God may heal you and I through laying on of hands. Isn't that right? God may heal you as you sat under the word preached, right? God may heal you when you are ready and studying the word of God, reading and studying God's word, right? God may heal you as you submit to leadership, right? God may heal you through counseling, right? God may heal you through just standing on the word, right? God may heal you as you come into the sanctuary and obey the voices of his prophets, right? So God is multifaceted. God is a God that can do anything, and he does it any way he wants to. But for us, we must not be stagnated uh, by looking that if he doesn't do it this way and so on. So God is varied in his marvelous, wonderful approach to healing. Some of us may be looking for God. Some may say, well, I can just go home and pray about it. I don't need to go up there. And that may be true, but not all of your healing is going to come that way. Only a small portion of your healing or my healing will come through our devotional prayer time. If you believe that, if you, if you believe contrary to that, I'm hoping that this will open your understanding. God won't be in a box. And so his, his healing power is varied. So the point is now the revelation of bringing healing to our hearts is the design of the Spirit of God to cause us to progress in our lives. It can cause marriages to be br brought back together. It can cause 
people that are at odds with their parents, or father or mother, it can cause them to forgive and find favor and blessings with their parents. It can cause a son or daughter to come back to their parents as they forgive. The healing will cause people to see straight and understand more clearly God's divine purpose of love. It is just so many things that when a person's alive, uh, receive and embrace the healing power and love of our Savior. What I feel God is saying, let's open ourselves to the revelation, to the vision of bringing healing and restoring people in the way, that, in, the, in the manner in which he wants to do and what he is, what he is purposed to do in, his, in, in our lives. So healing is the children's bread. Amen? Healing is the children's bread. And I believe that he wants us to embrace it. Okay, Lord, if you, if you want to heal me, then I'm opening myself wide for you to heal me because you know my life better than anybody else, right? I may look like I'm okay, but I may not be okay, right? And so it's important for us to open to the Lord what God has, wants to do. Uh, healing is the goal. Healing is the children's bread. And so I, just, I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. He said, for there is no revelation that people will get loose or cast off restraint. And uh, where there's no gaze upon God, where there's no gaze upon his, his oracle or his lively oracle, where there's, where there's, no, there's no constantly constant looking unto the revelation, where there's, no, where there's no vision, the people will cast off restraint. And we're in a time now where things are happening to the church, but they're happening to the church for a purpose. God is bringing the church closer to him because the church is his bride, right? And the church many times, maybe not all, but some, I'm not speaking, uh, I'm speaking holistically. Uh, but the church uh, has to be separated from the world, right? And so in order to separate the church from the world, God starts to allowing things to happen to bring us into his divine presence so that he can begin to talk to us and re-educate us, our thinking, and what he's saying to us as we draw close to him and he begins to remove things out of our lives that will hinder his purpose and plan for our individual lives. It's not complicated. And so what God does, he's allowing a lot of things that are happening now to the church at large. But his purpose is the same. He wants the church to go out victoriously. And so